Listen, I want you guys to know um, having a, a good woman beside you is a great thing. Um, and I've talked to my leadership, you know, and just I want to, to always be ready in season and out of season, no matter what God throws their way. And so last week I lost my um, voice on Monday, not from hollering, just lost it. I don't know why. I don't do a lot of hollering, but um, I told my bride yesterday, I said, you know, I think you're going to have to probably step in for me if my voice don't come back tomorrow. I have an amazing message I feel like I wanted to give to you today, and but I didn't want you to have to hear this voice and skipping in and out. So she stepped up, and I'm grateful today to have a good wife beside me. So just thank you, Shelly. Bless you. All right. Before the kids get dismissed, I wanted to have all the kids come up who usually go to kids' church. We do have kids' church. So if you all could come up here a minute. Oh. So this kind of goes along with, we just have several needs. Um, Rosie, where'd your son go? Okay, he'll be right back. Okay, I was going to have him come up, Pastor Jason come up. I was going to have, um, who else is going through something? Um, there's Miss Chloe. <laughs> I don't know if she's going through anything, but there's Miss Chloe. She's always here to help. Um, anything, anybody else going through something pretty traumatic in your life or um, dire need? You know, we have Pastor Jason's not had a voice all week. I just kind of feel like that's warfare. Um, we had a fire in an apartment complex last week, two weeks ago, last week, a week ago. And um, what's your son's first name? Okay, Travis. Um, he may have obviously lost his job, no place to live, not to be on the premises. He was a maintenance caretaker for this apartment complex. Um, I don't know the details, but it's a big deal when you have nowhere to go, you have no money coming in. Um, as soon as I saw him this morning, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to encourage him. And so I was wanting him up front, Pastor Jason for healing. Uh, Rosalind, you can step right over here. So kids, we're gonna anoint your hands real quick with oil here. Cooper, how did I forget you? You're one reason I did this too. During worship, I, I thought worship was amazing. Who agrees? Miss um, Faye. Oh, it's just oil. It's anointing oil. You want some? And you're just going to touch these guys if you want. There you go. So you guys circle around the people there that need prayer. <laughs> How's that? You want to circle around these three? We have Mr. Cooper, who's been dealing with some hive issues. You can help too. And um, we've got Cooper. He lives, I believe, in Fishers, and he visits frequently. So let's just lay hands on these guys here. He's right here. Where's Mr. Travis? Travis, can you join us? We're going to pray. So we're laying hands. You're coming in a circle. The kids are going to lay hands. Yeah, shoulders. Touch their shoulders right here, right here. We're just going to release God's word. And this is part of my teaching today of what I felt the Lord wanted you all to learn about how to pray and release. And we can have some adults. I don't know if, Nate, you want to come over. Nate, I was going to have you, Randy, and Carlene at the end of the service go to the daycare and bless the doorways and the threshold with um, communion and oil just because we had the flu bug hit last week and I'm just really particularly over this illness of whatever's happening. <laughs> um, we lost about seven staff, six staff a day and I was there hours upon hours and the kids deserve more than just me and two helpers. <laughs> so we got some amazing staff and they need healed and wholeness to come to them, which there is. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to release God's word of healing upon Travis and Max 
Cooper, Rosalind, Pastor Jason. Um, Father, we release your word over them. You are the God, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Father, you are the one who is the way maker. We release your word. God, your word says to test you in these things, not only just uh, for uh, giving and, and tithes, but Lord, we give you the glory and praise for what you're doing in the lives of these people here that we are praying over. You, Jesus, we release your light and glory, Jesus, into them. That, God, you would prepare a way for what they need. You would touch their bodies in miraculous ways. That they would be healed, Jesus, just by who you are. We thank you, Father, for these ones you love. We thank you, Lord, for the ones praying and believing and that their faith would arise for even the more. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, your word says that no weapon formed against these will prosper. Whether they, because we live in the world, we are here with the enemy. God, you kicked him out of heaven and put him in this world. But God, you say we have the victory over him by your word. And he lives within us. And the things from the spirit that we release does not come back null or void. We thank you for your word, Lord. Make ways where there does not seem ways to be made. Lord, for Travis's situation, you know everything from the beginning to the end of this situation. And Jesus, go before him and plow the way. Thank you, Father, for Pastor Jason's voice to return in strength and power and might. That their skin conditions, whether it be hives, eczema, uh, skin issues, no matter what Rosalind's standing in the gap for, Okay, Lord, she needs a natural miracle here of even intervention with uh, facilities of water, that she would have water out in Brown's Crossing. God, some way you would, you would provide for her, Lord. You would make that happen. Father, for marriages to be restored, for children, Lord, to grow up and continue to be nurtured in your truth, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for the family who believes for what we know you will do. And we give you all the glory and all the praise and thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. So this is kind of all a little backwards because I was going to do this at the end. But during worship I felt um, the Lord say do it ahead of time. But I would love to challenge a few of you uh, to go along with Nate and um, Randy and Carlene. Maybe um, Kurt and Jessica Rose. And... Um, you know, there was a word not long ago spoken. This is the year 2024, the year of the open door. So doors are open for us to receive the blessing. It is time, whatever's ruling um, the powers of darkness on this earth and whatever people are involved in making our lives hell. I feel like we're compared right now to uh, the Egyptians when, when the, God's people were in Egypt and uh, Pharaoh had reign over them. Well, this is no different than what we're living in. I don't feel like. I feel like, you know, a lot of things in our government is not right. So whatever's oppressing us as people, God has victory for us. And we really feel, just even by the words of the prophets who've gone before us the last several months, that God is going to make a way. We are going to see the fruit of our land, the fruit of our prayers. Um, this should be a season of victory. This whole year, we should see um, miracles, signs, and wonders. We should see what we speak come to pass. And um, that, that nothing that the enemy has schemed against us will prosper. You all agree? That is what... Did I leave my notes? I didn't even bring my notes up. You all know I need my notes. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I had that as number four, so I guess I'm going backwards. All right. So really, I think even before I've been up here, not a lot, but when I'm up here, um, even recently, I could have said um, and, and taught how to pray the word. And that was really what was on my heart. Earlier in the week when his voice was out, I said, Lord, if I have to get up there Sunday, what would you want me to share with the people? And again, I felt, he said, teach them how to pray my word. So it must be important to him. I kind of chuckled this morning. I'm like, didn't I just do that last time I spoke? And I don't even know, but I kind of think I did. But I have a few things that are a little different or maybe add to. So um, 
what I was going to tell Nate and the ones that want to go to the daycare, I wanted the thresholds anointed with the oil and even communion, if you even use um, the element of the juice on the threshold and above the door. Um, and you all know you're all um, mature in that, whoever goes over with them. And I'll tell you, if you have a heart to cleanse your home, you know, this is the time to do that. Anoint the doorposts with oil. Um, take communion. Um, war God's word over your family. And um, just the protection from the pit of hell. Because even though our world looks crazy, and we're sure it's probably going to get a little crazier, we have the victory for what the Lord has done, already in us and through us, and it's by his word. So I would definitely, I'm going to start in Ephesians 6, 17, just real quick, about the sword of the Spirit. And this is on, about the full armor of God. It's a great place to start, even if you're a new Christian. Just seriously get before the Lord, maybe in a state of communion like we have done with the elements, and then put on the armor of God. Just put it on. Say, Lord, I want to put on the helmet of salvation because it protects my mind from the lies of the enemy. Just go through this Ephesians 6.10 and put on the armor. That'll help a lot in your prayer life. So I'm going to start in 17. And this says here, well, if I can find it. Take the helmet of salvation. Oh, I'm going to back up just a minute. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, and you put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. We are to pray always with supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. That was another point I was going to make here in a little bit. If you don't have your prayer language, if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, be seeking that. Be asking the Lord for understanding. I was raised in it from sixth grade on and never thought anything weird about it. I thought it was really cool. I thought it was uh, powerful. I, I saw things around me happen that was just were just mir miraculous. So, but I didn't really experience it. And so receiving the prayer language, receiving your prayer language, and as it grows, as you mature in the Lord, it could be he'll... he'll Feel you full. You know, who knows how the Spirit will work. I had three words for nine years, and that's just what I prayed. So he's different with every person. But start asking him for understanding for the, the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because that will bring power to your life. Um, if, if it, it, it will ramp your life. <laughs> uh, prayer language and all, prayer, uh, miracles, signs and wonders, it'll all start happening. Okay. This guy behind me, I may have heard of him, but not much in the last few years. And I just um, was talking to Nate. Um, he's been around. He is a mighty man of God who the Lord shows him things. So he, he could be known as a prophet. Um, I want you, as you guys listen to this, listen to Joseph Z what he speaks and his words. A lot of what comes out of his mouth is the word of God just in his conversation. So I want you to pay attention to this. It's not very long. This just happened, I think, two days ago. I'm going to kind of step aside here. Um, but listen, just listen. This is, this is a good start of what I want you guys to get. There was a fire cascading across the plains going towards a nuclear base in Texas. This nuclear base was about to be engulfed in flames. And I mean, who knows what that could have led to? I mean, we might have been looking at our own potential um, Chernobyl. It could have been something absolutely terrible that was about to take place. And instead, we put out that Breaking Now report where we do that periodically. If there's something that needs to be said or there's news taking place or something we need to pray about or prophetically look at, and we, we hit our text to join list and everybody jumped on and we were able to get together and Clay Clark and I were on and shared, this is coming. This, this fire is a mile away from the nuclear base in Texas and we prayed. 
I prayed, our partners are praying, everybody's praying. And last night I found out, because I got a message from my friend, Pastor Brian Gibson, that they were interceding as a church. And guess what happened? A snowstorm came in, into Texas, and it hit that fire. And it, see, uh, there's Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak, America's mountain. And suddenly the fire was extinguished. The fire was extinguished. And I was so grateful to hear that from Pastor Brian. And you're looking at all that's going on. And I'm telling you the prayers of the righteous avail much. So here's the word of the Lord in this. Listen to me. The word of the Lord is that there is still the remnant that's praying and altering this narrative. And it gives me hope for this nation. That looked really bad. <clears throat> Enough for us to go live about it and put out a broadcast. And now, was it induced by uh, the powers that be? Probably. But you know what? I believe God answered with a snowstorm. They came with fire. God came with ice. <laughs> and here's the thing. I believe that it was stopped. Now, I feel a prophetic word in this, a strong one, that America shall be saved, that this nation is going to go through some hard times. There's going to be a lot of difficulty, a lot of smoke, a lot of fire, a lot of challenges. But at the end of the day, the prayers of the righteous avail much. And that is the word. That's the watchword right now. We're about to come into this solar eclipse on April 8th, where the, the X marks the spot. Your Charisma magazine just put out an article that we, we were sharing I'm so grateful to the Lord, uh, you know, that he's so graciously speaking to us. And, and I'm just sharing only what I see. And I got to tell you, I believe that we're on the cusp of a collision. But in the middle of this collision, difficulty, difficulty, smoke, fire, all of it. But the Lord will come. He will come to us like sweet spring rain. I'm telling you, the rains are coming. The goodness of God, the snow is coming. Victory is coming. We averted a major disaster. We got around it. Uh, just yesterday by prayer. I know it was by prayer. So we give all the glory to Jesus, all the glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the great God of heaven, that this did not turn into a major monumental disaster on American soil. I believe it's a type and a shadow of what's to come. I believe there's more, more breakthrough coming. I believe God is sending intervention. The word is intervention. In the United States, intervention in the nations, and intervention around the world. God is on the throne. And I'll tell you, we need to keep praying. We need to keep standing. We need to keep arising and shining for the light of God is coming. And let me just tell you something right now. You are not the minority. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're the majority. We're the ecclesia. We're the red church, the blood-bought believers. Man, God is with you. I want to thank our partners for helping us get the word out. I believe we tipped it along with Pastor Brian Gibson and many others like us. We were able to tip it by prayer, and it's partners like you that help us do these things and begin to bring a watchman now word, that Sons of Issachar anointing. Here we are. Thank you for being our partners. Thank you for standing with us. Please go to josephz.com. We need your help. Please partner today. You'll hear from us. You'll, we'll call you, and we will call you regularly, actually, and stand with you. I love you. Jesus is Lord. Repost this everywhere because it's time to celebrate that we saw a victory, a monumental victory, in the face of impending issues, darkness, Jesus is Lord. Listen to me. God is with you. This is your time. This is your hour. This is the hour that we've been waiting for. We're coming into this valley of decision. One quick word on this eclipse. It's coming April the 8th. It's a sign. It's a wonder. I believe the seven years leading up to it is one season. We're about to go into another seven-year cycle. And I believe it's going to be fire, collision. But listen to me. It was dark in Egypt, but it is light in Goshen. The devil may come walking over in your life, but he's going to go limping back. He's going to go limping back. Darkness doesn't stand a chance against the ecclesia, against you. It's time to rise and shine. I hope you'll partner with us. I really do. JosephZ.com, please partner with us. We need you. We're going to get after this. The Lord is with you. This is the hour of visitation. i got a lot of prophetic things to get into you, yet this week and this coming week, it's going to be strong, and I just speak life over you. Jesus is Lord. Love you guys. Please repost this, and please go to josephz.com and stand with us. We're standing with you. Amen. Love you guys. Isn't that awesome? It's just so encouraging what the Lord is doing. You hear how he uh, mentioned Goshen. Um, a friend of mine just had done a little study on it, and she sent me this this morning. I thought it was um, obviously timely. Um, so Goshen means, it symbolizes fertility and prosperity. No wonder, she, she writes, no wonder I felt this sense of security when God said that to me. So Goshen is a place of comfort and plenty. 
Now remember, this is where we are to be, America, uh, Christians. It's a word, a Hebrew word meaning draw near. So Goshen, we are to draw near more into the Lord. It's a symbol of where God's people live near him and are so secure in their welfare that the evil cannot be prevalent to us. It's our secret place, us getting alone with the Lord. Goshen is a heart posture of intimacy. It speaks prophetically of territory and occupation in the enemy's camp. So we have our own territory of goodness and, and fruit and righteous living and miracles. Um, I also had to think the Lord this morning kept putting the water in the pool. I said, well, Lord, how am I going to tie that in? But I felt like he wanted us to know and gain knowledge of what the water is. It's really our Western culture, and this goes back to, I'm sure people even in our region wonder what is going on with that church that has a pool in their sanctuary. You know, I don't care what people think, but they're, we, are, we perish for lack of knowledge when we don't know. Well, the Western world, we don't have a clue of Jesus' times or what the Hebrew culture was about because we're not taught it. So up here, if you're wondering, the Strong's Concordance gives us the Greek and Hebrew meaning of what the word says. So say you're in a passage and you're just reading and you're not understanding at all what you're reading, even if it's one verse, go to the Strong's Concordance, look up that verse and find the Greek and Hebrew. Even if it's one word, God will teach you something in that and then you will see the understanding. Does that make sense? Um, I won't share that one yet, but back to the water. So the mikvah, in this day and hour in Jerusalem and in Israel, they still mikvah. They walk up so many steps, they get in the water, they cleanse themselves, and they walk out so many steps. And that's exactly what that pool represents. And it's just a cleansing of the bride. Well, where in the word does it say, I, I'm going to, Jesus is coming after a bride without spot or wrinkle, right? That's in Revelation. So we all are to be uh, cleaner and cleaner and cleaner as we live life. But who knows, sometimes we live this life on this earth because the enemy rules here. It's a battle and sometimes we get messy or dirty and we sometimes don't make a right choice. So what should we do? Well, if we lived in Israel, we'd be going finding a mikvah as we walk along. There's a road of mikvah with over 200 mikvahs on that road. Because in the Bible days, when they walked to their, um, the thought just left my mind. Okay, Easter, where were they all coming to town for? Someone help me. Passover. <laughs> we're approaching that season. So um, <laughs> my mind just went blank. So like Passover, and then in the fall, they would walk again to the temple. And it was about getting rid of their sins and bringing the lambs and the the sheep and the goats or the chicken, whatever they were to sacrifice. You know, you could read the word, it's, it's a list. So they were bringing their sacrifices to the temple. But before they reached the temple, they would stop along the way and they would all mikvah because you could not approach the temple or the priests being unclean. Does that make sense? So people, you know, in our region, people of the Western culture can laugh at the pool all they want but we know what God's doing in the water. Uh, Y'all could raise your hand to who've experienced something mighty, whether it's a soul issue, a physical healing, um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, salvation, deliverance. We've seen it all here. And um, so anyway, the Lord wanted me to bring that up just as a, a reference of knowledge, a reference of what he's doing um, through the water. It's no uh, coincidence we had communion today and there is such power in communion. I know I have said it before, I was, for a season of years, I did communion daily. I did little oyster crackers and grape juice. Just set a time apart daily with the Lord. And I don't even know if anyone walking this earth knows the fullness that is in communion or for partaking in it. It's powerful. There's so much to that, that's a whole nother teaching. So the sword of the Spirit, let's go to Hebrews 4.12. I'm not sure if Scripture's up there. Oh, 
I think I saved this. Hold on. I want to read. Let me do Romans 8, 26 about the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray. So sometimes we don't know what to pray, right? Is any, sometimes anyone ever in a loss of what to pray? But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So it never hurts to pray in the Spirit when we're at a loss for words. I wanted to share this too. You guys, I've lost my, um, oh, for Pete's sake. Okay. So shall my word. So this is about his word and how powerful it is. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. We know that from his word. It says, so my word shall go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, which means without producing any effect. So God's word, when it goes sent forth, it's affecting everything that it reaches. But it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent. Isn't that powerful? So using his word. So here we go. Prayers that availeth much. Oh, I have the little communion element down here. You probably can't see it. And the anointing oil went somewhere. Those are all... Um, and guys, when I first was saved and started cleansing my home, and I just used cooking oil. I didn't even know they made fancy, <laughs> fancy uh, smelling frankincense and myrrh, you know, anointing oil. I just used what was in my cabinet. So God knew my heart, and, you know, it all works. It's just by his spirit. But this book, and I know I've talked about it before, Prayers That Develop Much, if you all want to pray his word over any situation, this is a powerful book. So this is topics, and I'm going to tell you how many of them. 156 topics, anywhere from marriages to prison inmates to how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to divine intervention about thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know, that's the Lord's Prayer. He actually... Uh, spoke that himself. It's an awesome way to pray or to learn how to pray. Anyway, I'm just going to open this. Okay, what about this one here? Chapter 31, Breaking the Curse of Abuse. So this is the scripture that attaches to it, Galatians 3.13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. It is written... Cursed is everyone who, on, who hangs on the tree. Well, who hung on the tree for us? We know Jesus Christ. So this goes on to say, it talks about being healed for emotional wounds. It talks about different abuse. Then she writes the prayer, and this is the prayer. I receive and confess that Jesus is my Lord, and I ask that your will be done in my life. Father, you had rescued me from the dominion of darkness and have brought me into the kingdom of the son of your love. Once I was in darkness, but now I'm in the light of you, and I walk as a child of light. The abuse is exposed and reproved by the light. It is made visible and clear, and where everything is visible and clear, there is light. Help me to grow in grace and undeserved favor, spiritual strength, and recognition and knowledge and understanding of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so I can experience your love and your trust and you, Lord, to be my Father over me. The history of my earthly family is filled with abusive behavior, hatred, strife, and rage. The painful memory of my past abuse has caused me to be hostile and abusive to others. I desire to be the doer of the word and not only a hearer. No matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. But I want to, and I can't. I want to do good, but I don't. When I try to do, I always try to do what is wrong, no matter what is going on. And I don't want that in my life any longer. So then it goes on. She confesses her sin of the abuse, the resentment, the hostility towards others. And then... 
it, the, the prayer ends with, I thank you, Lord, that the evil power of abuse has been broken, overthrown, and cast down. I submit myself to you, and I resist the devil. The need to hurt others no longer controls me or my family. So some of this is a prayer, and some of it's a decree of God's word. And then at the very end, it lists every scripture reference that this prayer was made from. Is that not powerful? So this is a mighty tool if you want to learn how to um, pray scripture. Now, I'll tell you, the book I really wanted to bring was my Bible. It's all torn apart. The binder hardly is even held together by threads. But it was by Stormy O'Meridan. And who all remembers Kmart back in Martinsville? Kmart, where the Trader Baker sits now. So that book was $9.99. It was a Bible that sat in the little open area. One day I walked in, and I was drawn to it because it was purple. And I love purple. So that's why I went to it. But as I opened it, I just I couldn't put it down. So I b bought that book, the Bible. And in every page was a scripture. So there would be purple highlighted somewhere on either page. And then there would be a prayer that she wrote out in the center of it that you were praying that scripture. Isn't that not cool? So God led me to that. And that was one, that was, this was early on. Um, I, my boys were baby babies. So they're now almost 35, 36, and 33. Crazy. So it was a long time ago. But it's powerful to pray the word. His word does not return void. It sets and hits the mark that it's supposed to. So just the importance of praying the word is what I believe he wants to get through to you all today. The importance of it. You can all see me afterwards to um, get these references. There's one more that somebody shared with me. Let me pull it up here. And this is a book on decree. Again, get with me if you want to see it. I'm a visual person, and so I wanted this on the screen, but didn't have time. It's called Declarations in the Desert by Tara Sierra Mosley. And again, powerful, powerful decrees of God's word. Again, topical like this. So there's various topics you can go to and then pick your decree for life situations. Isn't that amazing? So I believe I am done. I, I, I want to end with this. How many here remember Taylor was the sixth grader that was with me during the school shooting at West Middle School? I've said that before. I've talked about it. So she was down here job shadowing my friend. And the school shooting takes place. And she was job shadowing me. So her and I go under the desk. I immediately call 911. And as soon as I do that, I just release Jesus' light and glory over Taylor and I. She was a little girl who always operated in a lot of fear. And her grandma and I were good friends, so I knew that. Well, her father and mother lived in Fort Wayne and were beside themselves getting down here to pick her up and then already calling counselors to see who could deal with her because they could not even imagine what this has done to her. Okay? So... I had just went through a study by Katie Zuza, and that's how I was releasing the light of glory over us, is just from the power of what I had learned from six weeks. And that's basically all I said. We get under the desk. She actually, uh, the SWAT team gets her out to her family, and poof, she's gone. But um, not one nightmare came about this young girl. Not one issue, not one doctor appointment, not one psychiatric appointment, nothing. They could not believe that their daughter had no issues over the trauma that had just taken place. It, was, it is a powerful testimony. And to know this young lady now, she's 20-some years old, young 20s. Just yesterday, I was told, um, she's in New York City. She was over the ice skating uh, manager over the ice skating part at Market Square Arena. She just was offered a position of manager over every event that happens at Market Square Arena and with a huge raise and all. It just goes to show the Lord, uh, grandparents and parents praying over our children. You know, these, 
you know, I mean, no matter what situation, I, I kind of chuckled and said, you know, you're 70 some years old as her grandma, and not that you had them every day because her and her husband worked, but they had them at times, but when they had them, it mattered. They would pray. Their one grandson received the baptism of the Holy Spirit when he was like seven years old, and he uses his discernment as he went through school. He graduates this next year, going to IU. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, don't be bored. Don't be sitting in front of a TV all day long thinking you have no life, no matter what age you're at. Y'all can make a big difference by praying his word over nieces and nephews and grandchildren and children, because it starts in the family right? It first starts in our family. So just be encouraged with that. And I would love for two or three minutes, if a few of you could go over and pray through the daycare and release God's word. I think I'm wrapping up. It's, it, it's time. So anyway, I hope you're blessed and hope you learned something. Yeah, great. Shelly, this is so good. Stay here a minute. I want you guys to know, so, you know, I put my bride on the spot for this message this morning. What you're seeing right now is a word of God living inside of her, okay? Prayer living inside of her, the Holy Spirit living inside of her. Every one of you can have this. Every one of you can be put on a spot in an instant when the Bible says be ready in season, out of season. Every one of you can be put on a spot in an instant and give a word for someone to receive by living out the word. And this is an example of her. Thank you, Shelly, for a great example of living the word of God. It's, it's in her. If you get it in you, if you get it in you, it could come out just like this. So don't, we don't lift her up above anybody, but anyone can do this. I can say to any one of you, should be able to say to any one of you, hey, I need you to give me a message in 30 minutes on this subject. And you should be able to pull it out of you because of the word that's living in you, because of Holy Spirit who guides and nourishes that word inside of you. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you so much. So we're just going to do, really, we're going to do an altar call. Listen, if you want... This is the deal. If you want more of what God has for you, I don't, if you're saved, if you're unsaved, I want you to come up. If you're not saved and ask the Lord to come in your heart, live in your life. But I want you to know if you want more of this, if you want to be ready in season and out of season, and you want that stability to stay in the Word of God, to stay in the Spirit, to pray in the Spirit, if you don't know the Spirit of God or have Him inside of you, listen, it's crucial that you have Holy Spirit as a part of your life. In order for you to be centered up with Jesus, that is part of your center. He has to be part of that center. So if anyone wants to come up and pray, come and pray. Come and pray that God will just pour inside of you everything that he has. Everything that heaven has for you. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Come and pray. Come and pray. Please. Thank you guys. Thank you, Shelly. Come and pray. Listen. Listen.